It became apparent to me pretty early on that if I were gonna be talking about different boots and different brands in the heritage service boot space, then I would need certain footwear for a frame of reference. At that point, two boots immediately came to mind, the Red Wing Iron Rangers and the Wolverine Thousand Mile Boots. So I ended up purchasing both of them. However, today's video is about the Wolverine Thousand Miles. Thousand Mile. Thousand Miles? Okay. So they're the Wolverine Thousand Mile Boots, but it's very difficult to not refer to them casually as the Thousand Miles because who wants to say Thousand Mile Boots every time? Anyway, once I had made the decision to purchase, I went to the websites to look at the different leathers and colors that they had available, and I was immediately attracted to these beautiful olive tanned bone. Natural boots. They're natural, not bone. Don't listen to her, she's lying to you. Why was I so intrigued, you might ask? Because they were 50% off, and maybe more importantly, they weren't brown. I really wanted something that wasn't a basic brown boot and was in a different leather besides Chrome XL. I'll admit that I do buy some of this stuff with YouTube in mind, but I don't wanna have so many brown boots in my collection that they end up sitting forever. I had already had a few pairs of brown boots, a burgundy pair, and even a navy. So I was looking for something a little different, you know, like a lighter color boot in that almond, tan, bone, natural sort of hue. And with the 50% off discount, it was an easy purchase. Wolverine's been around since 1883, and they started producing the Thousand Mile Boot in 1914. So yeah, their heritage. These are very popular boots, and they're one of the best-selling heritage service boots in the world. It's my understanding that the basic design hasn't changed much in the 108 years since they've been producing the boot. On the website, Wolverine claims that the Thousand Mile Plain Toe Boot is America's original work boot. And that's a quote. I'm not exactly sure how true that is because a lot of the companies making boots and shoes back then have gone out of business. But Wolverine's still around, so I suppose they get to write the history. The Thousand Miles. Thousand Mile Boots are a genuine, no-nonsense service boot. It's a plain toe with a relatively low profile and a sleeker silhouette. Now, while I wouldn't necessarily call them slender per se, they don't seem nearly as voluminous as something like the Red Wing Iron Rangers or the Indie Boots from Alden. But I suppose that is the benefit of having a plain toe versus a cap toe. This pair is made of an olive tanned Horween leather. Olive tanning is a type of vegetable tanned leather, and according to the Leather Dictionary, it's actually one of the most environmentally friendly tanning processes available. I do have to say I was pleasantly surprised with how soft and malleable this leather was. For a technically veg tanned leather, I was expecting something a little stiffer, but this one reminds me more of a chrome tanned leather than a veg tanned leather in terms of softness. There's no leather lining on the inside of the boots. It's mostly just rough out of the leather combined with some suede and interestingly enough, in the toe box, pigskin. Now this is a porous, smooth leather and being porous, it does not deal well with water. It will absorb liquid as opposed to repelling it or having it beat off. I suppose you could treat them with a water resistant spray, but I'm not sure how that would affect the color and I'm not one to find out. So as far as I'm concerned, these boots will be my fair weather friends. The hardware on the boots is pretty solid. It's brass, comes with three speed hooks, making them super easy to get on and off. And the laces are a raw hide leather that looks really cool. I also like the triple stitch along the vamp, and I really like that the middle stitch is an accent stitch with a lighter, brighter color than the other two. Another reason these boots aren't great for wet conditions are the soles. I like leather soles. They're a lot of fun. And at the very least, I can resole these boots faster than any of my other boots. But although leather soles have a lot of character and they represent an earlier age, they're pretty much the least durable soles out of all the soles. They tend to get scratched up very easily, look fairly unattractive over time, and they don't offer a lot of traction in wet conditions. 
Luckily, this pair has a Vibram sole, so at the very least, you will get some traction in wet conditions. I guess the thing I like the most about the thousand miles, the thousand mile, oh for goodness sake, these boots is the design. It looks really cool, and I'm not even entirely sure I can articulate why. Sometimes the design team just hits a home run, and I think they did that here. I like the no-nonsense construction and the lack of a full interior lining. I think between the lack of lining and the leather soles, the boots are a lot lighter than they otherwise would be. And in this particular case, I really like the leather and color combination. They look completely different from any other boots in my collection. As for negatives, I guess the thing that I'm most concerned about is the fact that there isn't a full leather insole. The leather insole runs from the toe box towards the heel, but it doesn't go all the way. It's combined with a permanent leather sock liner that runs contrary-wise about three-fourths of the way from the heel towards the toe box, so they end up overlapping something like this. I suppose my concern is if I'm constantly putting my feet in and out of the boots, is it going to cause the leather sock liner to be pulled back or become loose? Then there's the heel stack. On these, it isn't a full leather heel stack, which wouldn't be a super big deal, but at this price point, I'd rather have a full leather heel stack than a stacked leather particle board. Even if I know most cobblers can work with either material easily, it's just better and I want better. The Thousand Mile Boot is an iconic boot, and it's a standard bearer in the heritage service boot realm. I haven't worn them long enough to have any solid conclusions other than I like them. They're very comfortable, there was no real break-in period, and they look fantastic. But I bought these boots as a potential benchmark by which I might judge other boots based on price. These boots are made in America, and that costs more. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised while they're similarly priced, they're not quite as good, or at least they don't seem to be, as the Grant Stone boots. The Grant Stones are built in China, and it costs less to build in China. So if made in America is important to you, then you're gonna have to pay a little bit more to get a similar build quality. I think I'll have a more solid opinion about these as I expose myself to more boots and more brands over time. But for now, I like them quite a bit, and if you can get them on sale, then I highly recommend them. If you're new here, hi. My name's Elle, and I make videos about quality footwear, watches, leather goods, and pretty much anything cool that I wanna talk about on the channel. If you enjoyed this video, then I encourage you to check out my library of similar content here. I also encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you know when I post my next video. As for my subscribers, I needed a change of scenery, so I decided to shoot in the living room today. I feel like it looks more cinematic, but I don't feel like there's a ton going on in the background. What do you guys think? Do you like it better when I do something like this, or do you prefer when I just stick to my studio downstairs? Let me know in the comments down below, depending on what you guys say, I might start incorporating this into my other videos. But whether you are new here or you've been following me since the beginning, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.